<laughs> there it is. <clears throat> All right. So thank you everyone um, uh, for joining us um, and agreeing to volunteer. Um, Juneteenth Santa Barbara is a special um, special thing uh, for, for us, especially for me. Um, and my name is Jordan Killebrew. I'm one of the co-founders and we are in our fifth year of doing this event. Um, and I'll go ahead and have Leticia also introduce herself. Hello everyone, um, Leticia Forney Rush, co-organizer and creative director for Healing Justice. And for Juneteenth, I am the um, event coordinator. And so I'll be the logistics person, point person. Oh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Yes, and my pronouns are he, him. All right, so we're gonna jump right in um, and let's talk about what we're gonna do today. I don't know why my computer's doing that. All right, so um, welcome to Juneteenth SB. We're excited to have folks. Um, and uh, today we're just gonna go over a quick thank you because we cannot thank our volunteers enough. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, go over our community agreements. This is normally, our community agreements are normally what we, we go over when we have uh, community um, events and community meetings, um, but this is still applicable as volunteers and how we would want the volunteers to engage with our community. We also have, uh, we'll go over our event history because it's nice to know, especially as volunteers, people might ask you questions. And so it might be nice to know just where the history came from. Um, and then we'll have our 2022 event overview, um, which Leticia will walk us through. Uh, we'll go over some volunteer expectations and then we'll have time at the end for some questions. Um, so with that, we cannot thank our volunteers enough. Uh, thank you for taking the time to really um, engage with us meaningfully and, um, and yeah, just give back to the community. And so we appreciate you so, so much. Um, we will make sure that you get a free meal and a free t-shirt um, and hopefully uh, have a wonderful, wonderful, fun, fun day. Um, with that said, we'll jump into community agreements. So community agreements for volunteering. Um, we again, go over these when we have community meetings and um, we feel like it's important to also just go over them when we um, have folks volunteer with us. Um, and so as you are volunteering, there's probably gonna be people that are gonna come and ask you questions um, just because you'll have your, your event shirt on that says volunteer. Um, and so we ask that you take space and make space. So just be mindful of creating space uh, for many people at the event. So people might ask you, the same question over again, there might be the same repetitiveness at the event. Um, just note that, you know, with each new person, just continue to be the nice, kind people that you are and, um, and answer. Um, it's definitely going to be a little bit of customer service, for, especially for folks that are working different stations. Um, and sometimes customer service can be, you know, uh, uh, tiresome, but we just hope that you um, can be positive and, and the loving people that you are um, and just allow people to ask those questions and clarify if they have any additional questions. Um, also, what's important is that you take care of yourself and have fun. This is a, a festival. This is a block party. We're able to have a block party this year. It's something that we've been working towards. And we're hoping that everybody can, you know, make sure that you take care of yourself. If you need to use the restroom, just make sure that you're, you're covered um, at your station. And, and, you know, if you need water, um, just let us know. Um, but also have fun. You're going to be engaging with lots of amazing community members that are just there to enjoy and celebrate the holiday. Um, sometimes at our events, and we've had this happen in our in-person events in the past, is that some people have a lot of opinions. Um, and so what we say is we critique the idea and not the person. And so just holding each other and um, we want to speak with each other with love, even when we disagree. Um, and I mentioned that because uh, I remember in our 2019 event, we had folks uh, that wrote on one of our, our banners, like it says, um, why Juneteenth and people wrote Blue Lives Matter. And so we had to, you know, educate folks. And that's a, a point of time where you can come find myself or any of the June team, and we can also um, work through that. But just a reminder to critique the idea, not the person, um, especially in today's climate, especially nationally, there's just a lot of <laughs> opinions that um, bubble up. And so at any point, it, please come find us um, and also, Hold the right to walk away <laughs> if you, you don't need to engage. Um, uh, another tenant that we like to use is center the most impact, uh, impacted. So we don't tone police. So we ask everybody to just come as, as you are. Um, and we also ask that everybody respects folks' full identities, um, including diverse gender expressions. Um, like Leticia and I mentioned, we use uh, our, our pronouns so people are aware of 
how we would like to be engaged, feel free to do so if you if you want to um, when engaging with people. Um, my favorite share glitter, not shade. Um, so we all want to just make sure that we're accountable. Um, we never want to cause harm, but sometimes we do. Um, and with that, we just want to make sure that you know um, we work through it and and move past it. And then. Oh, above all things, we just always are about meaningful and, and purposeful relationships and engagement. So we want to make this space um, and have it be meaningful for you. And we want to make memories with you and we cannot thank you enough. So these are our community agreements that we uh, are requesting of our volunteers to just uphold um, as you engage with community members. Um, it's going to be diverse community members and we always just want to lean into having fun. Uh, making sure that you're taken care of, um, education if necessary, um, and just, you know, being the loving, warm people that you are. All right, next slide. So our event history. Um, it's hard to, uh, I guess I can start from the beginning. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. So in 2016, myself and Chiani Dri, who's this person on the far, um, far, you're probably your far left. Um, <laughs> we, were organizing around um, Philando Castile and Alton Sterling and the nine police officers that were um, killed in Dallas to find space for people to grieve and heal. And so what we decided to do is we decided to bring people together at a candlelight vigil at the courthouse. And out of that, we really found that a lot of people were like, well, what's next? Because over 400 people showed up and we were like, whoa, this is a lot of people that are, are hurting and want to be involved. And so a lot of that started um, what I would, I would like to call the beginnings of Hilton Justice because that's when Simone got involved and that's when Crystal got involved. Um, and then also we were realizing as we continue to organize and organize and organize, we understand that in black pain that there is a direct connection to joy. And we were like, we need to do something for us, for our community to also, just show joy, show, celebrate ourselves, celebrate our work, celebrate our ancestors and elders. And in 2018, um, Simone, Chiani, and myself were like, let's have our own Juneteenth celebration. And we cooked food in our homes and we came, went over to the Lower West Side um, and started celebrating just, you know, it was a small group of 20 and we had uh, local live performances and Mr. Joyner came and, and did some poetry. Um, and we just had a, a lovely day with beautiful food. Um, I cooked mac and cheese. Uh, I know Chiani brought in her pies and it was just beautiful. The following year, we were able to um, partner with the library and that's this picture right here, um, where we were in the library courtyard and we were able to have live performances, gospel choir, um, black org organizations table and showcase their work. Um, I wouldn't say the start of a Black artisan market, but maybe that was, I'm not sure. I, I would say Healing Justice actually started the Black um, artisan market for sure. Um, but the, this was more forward base and I would, it was and just fun. Are, yeah. I'm gonna interrupt you. Yeah. Healing Justice partnered with Juneteenth to start the Black artisan market. There we go. Thank right. you so much. I need, we need the facts. Um, and so in that moment, we. Again, 400 people showed up and we were just like, wow. And we also were just amazed at how many black people that we didn't even know were there. And um, it was beautiful. Of course, the following year, 2020, <laughs> we had to pivot. And so what we did is because a lot of black community members are always asked, well, where are the black people? Where, where are the black people in our community? We actually created an archive. We asked black folks um, in our community to send us a five minute video of what they do in the community. And we created an archive that's now on JuneteenthSB.org um, where people were able to really showcase their work. And now I use that to this day. If somebody's like, oh, I would love to be linked with a black designer. I can send them a link to their page that's on our website um, and go from there. And so we're really proud of that. And then uh, in um, 2021, I'll let Letitia talk about what they did in 2021 because she really, she came in, Healing Justice came in and did some amazing things. Um, we did a hybrid of in-person and virtual. We had um, performances, we had Vivian Storm host that with Talia, um, on one of our youth members of Healing Justice in Juneteenth. Um, and then we had an in-person Black artist in market and that's where the um, collection of artisans came together um, in masses. We had over, I believe, 10 artisans. And then we had Melanin, 
Um, we had melanin starting on Juneteenth. It lasted through, we just closed it um, last March, but it started for Juneteenth. And then we had over, I believe, I believe over a thousand people come through, not to mention all of those people who were just passer buyers on State Street. Um, this is the first time that Juneteenth was held on State Street because before previously it was always in um, homes or local churches. Um, so it was a pretty big move for Juneteenth to be on state. Uh, thank you, Atisha. And what I, I, and Letitia mentioned this a little bit, is that this is not the first iteration of, of Juneteenth. Our elders and ancestors have been celebrating Juneteenth in different, different ways and different regards in Santa Barbara um, way before our time. We were just fortunate enough, especially after May, um, May 30th, um, 2020, when Healing Justice made demands that the city give institutional funding for Juneteenth, and we received $35,000 from the city that we have, are now able to celebrate in this way. And so a huge shout out to Healing Justice. Um, those are our siblings over there and, and Leticia and Simone and um, Crystal for all the hard work that they do. Um, so that's a little bit of our event history. And now um, we're excited because now we get to work towards a block party. Um, and so that's where I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Leticia for a, a quick event. Yes. Okay. So um, this year we're having it on the 200 block of East Montecito Street and Yannan Alley Street. So which that's Gray Avenue. So we have it um, Montecito Street's by the freeway. Yannan Alley Street is within the funk zone. Um, this is a monumental space for us. This is historic Santa Barbara, Black Santa Barbara. Um, through our research with Healing Justice, we were able to find that most of these buildings were either owned or rented to Black folks. Um, we're gonna be doing it right in front of Shell Hoobs. So Shell Hoobs is the one with the little, um, that one right there, yep. Um, we are going to have the Black Artisan Market at the entryway and where the star is, is where Juneteenth's table will be. Unfortunately, it has to be right by the bathroom, so we'll give it a little space, just FYI, y'all. Um, then we have people can walk through the artisan market, head towards seating areas, um, and then in the shallow hoops, oh yeah, there's a stage there, Jordan, thank you, the big square there. Um, we Behind it will be the generator and the green room for the bands. Um, we will need someone to monitor the green room um, just to make sure that their stuff is safe and to kind of just help with the sound team. In Shell Hoob's little parking lot, we will have a kid zone. In that zone will be a face painter, some kids tables, um, snow cone machine and a popcorn machine. Um, and of course you have to have a lounge for parents, right? Especially if they're breastfeeding parents or a nursing parents. I mean, sorry, nursing or feeding parents. Um, and then we were hoping to have umbrellas for each table in that area for, yep, for folks. Um, I believe we'll have extra umbrellas. So if you're on duty and one of our vendors says that they need an umbrella, we will have plenty. Um, at the Juneteenth booth, this is gonna be really important for folks who are gonna work in that area. That will be your ch the check-in for folks to grab their food coins, which is their nourishment coins. That's how they'll be able to get food from Shahu. We will not be serving alcohol, but if folks want to buy or, um, you know, Shell Hoops has beer and margaritas and stuff, they have to stay within the Shell Hoops building. So that would be anything that's Shell Hoop owned, they can stay with their, they can have their beer. So it's kind of like a beer garden when you go to, like the Lemon Festival. Um, they can also purchase merch from the Juneteenth booth, and then they can also get information about Juneteenth from the Juneteenth booth. Um, volunteers will be checking in at the Juneteenth booth. That's where you'll get your t-shirts, sign your waivers. Um, please show up five, 10 minutes prior to get your information, um, and then where your stations will be. Jordan, if you can go up to, there's like a faint square down, 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 right there. You see that faint square there? That's going to be our 360 booth. So folks can go in and take um, a three, sorry, my kids are playing video games. Um, 
<laughs> that will be the 360 booth where people can take their photos. And um, we will also have a Juneteenth banner behind that. Um, please encourage people to do it. It'll be our way of documenting folks for being, for visiting. And it's a fun way to have like the stage in the background too. Um, anything else, Jordan, I'm missing? I feel no, like I think that's a great overview and a huge thank you, Leticia, and for like putting all this, the mastermind behind all of this and putting it all together, all the logistics. Uh, one thing to note, if people are asking, you know, for social media, we ask that they just hashtag Juneteenth SB um or at us at juneteenth sb that's really the standard um on facebook and social media and instagram and then i think also uh twitter um and, and yeah and there'll be flyers and stuff with all that information as well too awesome thank you oh so i did want to talk oh. sorry i forgot to mention that marborg is bringing um those cardboard trash cans and recycling bins so if you see anybody walking around with trash please just encourage them to recycle we will have recycling bins um yeah sorry just want to make sure we did that that's great all right so i wanted to shout out leticia and crystal who have been working um so hard they've been on the logistics side the planning um Crystal has been our designer, but I also wanted to just let, let you know that our core team is, of course, the co-founders, Chiani Dri, Simone Ruskamp, uh, myself, Leticia, and Crystal. And so uh, four of us will be there that day. So if you're having any questions, um, just come find us. Uh, we'll most likely be at the Juneteenth tent, but I think every now and then we'll probably be walking through just checking in on people and checking in on volunteers to make sure you have anything um, and everything that you need. Um, so yeah, some expectations that we can talk about um, is just, you know, it's the date, it's Sunday, June 19th, that's two weeks from today. Um, the event will be from 12 to 5 p.m. Just note that volunteer shifts will start as early as 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. We have your uh, preferences and your station preferences, so we're going to get that information to you ho um, hopefully this week. I, we are also volunteers, essentially, and so we, we work it during the daytime and we'll, we'll try to get everything to you. Um, we also know that it would be not fun if you're at one station at one, like for the full three hour shift span or whatever. So we'll try and um, make it a little bit diverse for you so that you'll have be have one hour block at each station um, over your shift. So it's a little bit of fun for you. Um, and then we're just asking again, volunteers to arrive at their scheduled time. Actually, what Leticia said is five minutes before. Um, and then you'll have to check in at Juneteenth uh, tent, you'll receive your t-shirt, mill, mill token. We'll ask you that you wear your shirt while you're volunteering. You're more than welcome to wear it after you're volunteering. It's just people will probably be asking you questions. Um, up to you, but we would love if you represent us. We we would love it. And then of course sign a waiver. Um, uh, yeah. And then the next portion is just what happened there. Again, be, please be punctual. Please follow community agreements. Um, please eat before or after your shift. Um, and then please make sure your station is covered if you need to use the restroom. Again, one of us will be walking through. So if you need to use the restroom, that's perfectly fine. And then of course, have fun. So yeah. Can I should... add something on a serious note? Yeah. Okay, after you said have fun. <laughs> um, we just wanna be mindful that we do um, realize that nationally there have been a lot of um, horrific incidences with, you know, institutions and um, public spaces. We want you to know that we have um, met with the fire department, we're meeting with um, security teams so that we can make sure that everyone is safe during this event. Um, we're really, really concerned that, you know, we will be having a lot of people in this space. So we, we want you to know that we're gonna do our very best to make sure everyone's safe. Absolutely, and I, I will just reiterate, we do have a safety plan um, that's being, created right now. Um, and so we just want everybody to be safe, have fun and be in community. Um, so yeah, with that, any questions? I don't have any questions at this time. I appreciate all of the information and the history. Very interesting and just great work. And I'm really excited. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Amanda, do you have any questions? Yeah, same here. No questions. Thank you guys for the overview. All right. I'm well, looking forward to it. Thank you. We can't thank you enough. And <laughs> we'll be, we'll continue to email and make sure, like, if you have any questions that come up, just email the Juneteenth SBC at gmail.com uh, uh, account. And um, we can't thank you enough. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll be in, in contact and we'll see you on June 19th. Awesome. Thank you.
See ya. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>